skinny nigga, fat racks, stand the fuck up out the way. White runs inside my two. Welcome back to the channel, man. If you tuning in today, man, we gonna pick up my gun from this paperwork police, man. Hold on now. No, man, for the people who don't know and outside of Illinois, when you purchase a gun, it has to, you have to wait 72 hours until you can go pick up your gun from your FFL. <laughs> Basically, after my 72 hours, I'm going to go pick up my gun from the FFL. But this is not a regular, regular gun. As I didn't mention to you guys, Illinois residents and citizens are currently out of scrutiny, bro. We were snuck with the Illinois law HB 5471, which is Illinois high capacity assault weapons ban. So, for the people who don't know any when outside of Illinois, anything um, over 15 rounds is permitted for a high capacity magazine for a handgun. Anything over 10 rounds is permitted a high capacity magazine for a uh, AR-15 or assault weapon, whatever, whatever the term is. So basically, if you have those t uh, two things, then you are a felon. Oh hell no! Even if you uh, purchased those guns before January 10th is when that law went in effect, you still have to. Well, they want you to register your assault weapons and pay twenty-five dollars per each gun that you register on the list. But it has been. Private parties and organization, and even sheriffs around the uh, Illinois area coming together and saying that they won't enforce the law because they feel like it's unconstitutional. And the private parties and organizations have went on to sue the state, just not not just at the state level, but at the Supreme Court level too, challenging the law, um, saying that it's unconstitutional and things like that. So far, it has been four uh, cases won against the state at the, at the state level. Three under one, which under one uh, law firm, which is Thomas DeVore and his law firm. Uh, one under uh, Dan Calkins and Day Peoples, a law firm under in the Mackin County. Um, the first one under D Thomas DeVore is under it's in two different counties. The first and the last case was in the same county, which was Effingham, and the second case was in White County. Um, Y'all probably don't even know about this shit, bro. So honestly, I'm just really just ranting, bro. But basically, the people who have challenged the law and paid for a lawyer, which was like a $200 uh, retainer fee um, to be able to be represented in one of these cases, to be able to buy assault weapons or to be to get a temporary restraining order against this law from going into effect, but you don't have to register your guns and you can still be able to buy assault weapons and high capacity magazines while this is getting figured out into the Supreme Court. So I was one of them ones, you know what I'm saying? I found I figured that out from watching my boy Bishop on Air which I'm watching him right now. I'm basically trying to see what's going on with that man. I'm always just trying to stay up to my laws and because I feel like when you a new gun owner and enthusiast, you most definitely need to stay on your laws. So if you're in the Illinois area, Bishop on Air or any type of news outlet would be a great way to stay up on your laws because they literally snuck us with this law and we didn't even wasn't hearing nothing about this, about it being introduced to them or anything like that or being worked through. They literally went into this, fix it around. It was about some other shit, about some safety things with, uh, amusement rides and things like that and then they went into it the day before it, it actually i got passed through and switched it out and made it about guns so you most definitely want to make sure you stay up on your laws because we are currently under scrutiny all the time and they literally don't give a hell of a hell about illinois citizens or any type of law-abiding citizens who's trying to do things the right way but nevertheless man so i paid 200 dollars to get represented on the third case of the tro palmetto state dropped with a new line on the 27th of last month so you know i have to see what's going on man the new saber line i have bought it i emailed the compliance office called them to see if i was i was, I was going to be able to even be able to get the gun sent because i didn't know if palmetto state was still sending guns to illinois if you had to tear if you have been granted a TRO or not. So 
when I called them, they was basically telling me like I had to wait till the compliance uh, office emailed me the next morning and to see what was going on. When the compliance uh, off, um, department emailed me, they said, if you are not law enforcement or military, um, you cannot be possess this weapon. And if you cannot show us your credentials saying that you are law enforcement or military, then we will not be able to give you this gun or send it to your FFL. So basically, when I seen that, I low-key started to panic because I paid $200 to be granted a TRO to be able to buy guns during the crisis until it get figured out in the Supreme Court, like I said. And so I emailed them back basically saying, like, hey, I've been granted a TRO against this law from going into effect. And they was like, oh, okay. <clears throat> they say, oh, okay, sorry, we forgot to mention that too. Um, I, I guess that was probably like a little automated email, but they got back with me like in two minutes. But um, when they got back with me, they was respectful, saying like, hey, yeah, just send us the, the email of us showing you and your FOID, I mean, you and your firearms, F, you and your FFL dealer on a motherfucking TRO. So basically, I had to send that in, but I was having trouble sending that in because I don't know how to work my email. So basically, they said somebody else had already previously bought one of the banned items from them before and they sent the TRO in so they just went on to that TRO and looked me up so now we fast forward and my shit is out of paperwork police I already went to go do the paperwork on Monday the range was closed on Wednesday so I wasn't being able to pick it up Wednesday um a new thing that that just happened to me that I feel like is very interesting um even though I just bought my mp5 um like probably like in December or so they did not change my expiration date on my FOIA Car. So now, soon, like yesterday, I was supposed to go pick up my gun. So, and yesterday, I got a text message saying, your FOIA license expiration date has been extended due to your recent firearm purchase. Please log in, log in to your dashboard to see your new expiration date. So when I logged into the dashboard to see my new expiration date, my previous expiration date was uh, October 11, 2032. Now my new uh, expiration date is March 8, 2033. Um, if you guys have ever... I don't know, I feel like that's maybe some new since the Illinois assault weapons been I don't even know, bro. If you went through that before, let me know because I don't really know what the hell is going on. I don't feel like um it really affects me in that way, in such a way, but I really just wanna know like why did that even happen? Because it didn't happen with my previous purchase before that, but Nevertheless, man, so today we're going to be picking up the gun from the gun range since we just got it out of paperwork party. We then basically showed you what we had to do to go through to get the gun released to us. Now it's time to go pick up the gun from the Boondocks, which is my FFL dealer. So we're going to be picking the gun up, bringing it back home, unboxing it, showing you what does the new Sabre line has to offer. And without further ado, let's do what we came here to do. Just pulled up to the Bone Dots gun range. Spring, I mean, in Rochester, Illinois. Basically, to give you guys a little insight on what to really expect. Or what, if you haven't ever been here, I'm gonna go in here, show you guys what they got to offer to pick up my gun, because it's finally been released from the paperwork jail. Could have picked it up yesterday, but it was closed yesterday. Nevertheless, man, we here. Let's get in here, man. I'm really trying. I'm not trying to be in here for too long. Need to get back to the crib. Get to the um, more unboxing, more content I need to put out. Right now it's 3:55. I haven't came up here right away because I'm really been shooting my intro. Been shooting that fucking video for so long, man. I'm ready for that shit to be up. But nevertheless, man, let's get in here to, and show you guys what to expect when you go into the Boondocks gun range. If you are not from out here. Oh, shit. 
Rings look a little dry today. That little Keisha to came up here with that thing. I don't know. Hello. Today at the Boondocks Gun Range. You guys have never been to the Boondocks Gun Range. No, definitely it's a family friendly, warm environment kind of here. First time I came here shoot my MP5. I was in here for like an hour and 30 minutes over time. He had to kick me out the range. But let's get into the paperwork and the things that we have to do today. The inventory that they have. You have ammunition in here to get your ammunition at home. Range rentals. So what I recommend you to do if you're looking to buy your first handgun and haven't shot no handgun yet, you will definitely need to get in here and rent some of these guns out. $15 is not going to break the bank. You just got to pay for the ammo. They got optics in here. Anything you need. Snacks, of course. You can get your little bag. Eyes and ear protection. You don't have that out there. Uh, sights for your gun. But you cannot shoot your sights at a range without rear or front sights. Um, different little tools and everything. Front grips, um, hand stops, vertical grips, everything. Literally. Range going crazy, man. I'm gonna show that part. I want to get back. Clean it. Rods and sticks for you to clean your, your AR-15 or nine millimeter guns. You got the 30 round mags in the back. Um, if you want those, you have to go ask him for that. Um, right now, like I said, since we are in the crisis, we can only have 10 uh, for an AR-15 and 15 for a handgun. I don't really know what this is. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to mention that they do have a lot of uh, good good classes here. I took my concealed carry class here. It's most definitely a great experience. And I would recommend it to anybody who's looking to get in a concealed carry or to carry an arm. They teach a lot about training and safety and things like that. We took the class in that uh, room right there. And now, after all that, let's get into the paperwork and stuff like that. Um, one thing that happened, um, yesterday I got a message saying that they extended my um, expiration date mm -hmm. for my... So, since you submitted fingerprints for your concealed carry license, any time that you purchase a firearm, it will update or extend the expiration date of your FOID card to 10 years from the date of the approval. Interesting. That's why I was wondering why um, it changed, but... Uh, yes, y'all yeah, have the window max for the P max? Yep. Uh, how much did it go for? I don't remember that. I've been on shelf for a while. I'll say three. Uh, a couple of more mags and things. Like I said, if you want to obtain 30 round mags and you are on the TRO list, you have to ask him and he has to go get it from the back. You can't have it out for the public to grab anymore because people can still let. And, you know, that's them on the fire and they don't need to be on the fire. The gun docks is most definitely a place I would recommend to come to shoot your first gun. Or to shoot, period, bro. Like, there's people in here. Getting it in at the range, man. For sure. Tom Ho, oh, that's my dog, man. What he doing there? Look at my vans, man. Oh, yeah, he lit for sure. He lit. Yeah, you know, people is in the gun range. I'm here picking up a new thing. He here shooting his thing, man. He live for sure. So we just left the Boondocks gun range from picking up my gun. Um, right here. You know what I'm saying?
son. That bitch look real good. Fat ass box. A thousand dollar gun. No hard case box. I don't really know how to feel about that. Um, I already looked at it. It looks good as hell. I, I think um, I want to do like a series of dressing up my rifles and things like that. If you guys want to see like that, basically like what I have to go through or what things do I take into consideration when buying a gun. I feel like, I, I mean, not buying a gun, but like when dressing that motherfucker up. So if you guys you know interested in that, seeing like me add little accessories to that John, let's say, mm, get like five likes on this video, man. I'm get something going, bro. I ain't really trying to set the bar too high. Um, gotta say I appreciate my 30 subscribers who've been rocking with me, man. Even though I ain't been pushing out no videos, man, it's been a process. Especially with all the scrutiny that I have to go through, paying $200 to even get a TRO to even be able to obtain high capacity magazines and um, guns like I just showed you. The process, I mean, this video is really an insight on the process that I really have to go through. Basically showing you guys what I have to do to be able to compete with those big names out here and why I can't be able to produce um, content as fast as other people because honestly, I am new to editing and one more thing is I, I don't be able to pick up my gun from 72 hours to actually, from when it actually gets here. If I do send it from, um, if I get it sent from online, I don't be able to come do the paperwork until it gets to the FFL dealer because they have to put the so, the, uh, the the serial number in that job. So if they don't have the serial number, then they won't be able to do the paperwork while the gun is on the way for you can just pick it up when the gun gets here from UPS or whatever the case may be. So, it's just been a hassle, man. If you like these type of videos, man, like, subscribe, comment, man. We out, man. Next video should be an unboxing of this gun, man. I just really wanted to take you guys on to the process. Uh, basically, what did I, I have to go to to even be able to obtain this firearm and how I was affected. Number one on YouTube, private dinner in Malibu. Show you how to work your stick, ain't nobody gonna handle you. Put you in a phantom, cause you my little